Mm-mm. You can Let me grab my coffee real quick. <laughs> hey, bring get the coffee. Oh. Man, you got a little bit. What's up, you guys? <laughs> all right, guys. All right, guys. Welcome. We go. Morning, morning, morning. With, with our main topic today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that thing got me tickled to death. <laughs> hey, just keep it real, man. Keep it real. Oh, you guys, you you guys are better than Folgers. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you are. All right, so yeah, so eighty, we're gonna get it cracking and populating today, man. Um, yes, indeed. So, hey, Lee's. Good morning. God bless to you. We have AD in the building. We also have Pastor yes. Brian. Yeah, I'm yes. sorry. Your man, Pastor Brian. Man, uh, Brian. Your man. Yeah, Pastor your man. man. Yes, sir. <laughs> so we uh, had an interesting topic yesterday. AD's going to kick it off for us because yes. this is a great round table. So make sure you invite your people. Okay. If you guys are on my Facebook page, go ahead and invite, 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 please, because there's some people that need to hear this today. All right. So, AD, you got the floor, uh, sir. Okay. So what up, y'all? Good morning. <laughs> Appreciate you guys rocking with us. All right. So today... We got a round table. We're talking about, you know, like always relationships and issues and situations and stuff like that. So today we're talking about our topic is stop living with hurt and do something about it. Stop living hurt and do something about it. Um, Because a lot of people I know and I'm sure these guys know men and women alike are in relationships where they're stuck or they feel like they're stuck and they're just not moving forward, not moving backwards. It's just not moving at all. Um, and before we kind of kick off with everybody's thoughts and opinions on it, I was uh, going through some blogs and reading some. And in psychology today, probably not today, but sometime, sometime yesterday, <laughs> sometime yesterday <laughs> there was like six reasons uh, why people stay in bad relationships. Um, and one of them is give it to satis- me slow. Give it to me slow. <laughs> you gonna type it in? Satisfied it with unsatisfied relationships. Satisfied with unsatisfied relationships. And and basically they have low comparison levels. Low comparison levels. So they stick with it because you know their level of comparing to you know whatever else is very low. Um, number two. Number two is a shift in priorities. Now, this one was kind of wild. It's, it's an overplay of positive attributes. You know, so instead of focusing on what they're so horrible at and what make what they make you feel bad at, they just overplay the, the good things or the few good things that, that they do great. You know, they just focus on that. And I know, I know several people that have done that, but I'm like, yo, they're bad is horrible. <laughs> you know, like, like, how could you even focus on these good attributes when their worst is like the main problem and why you should leave, you know? But anyway, number three, low quality alternatives. So with their, their esteem so low, they feel like being alone or finding somebody else will make it, will, won't be any better than what they have now, you know? Mm-hmm. So they have low, they, they've set their expectations low. So they just like it's no it's no better out there. So I might as well just stay here. Of course, number that? number four, a basic one is manipulation. You know, he manipulates you, she manipulates you into into staying for whatever reason, emotional, strategic. However, you know, a level of manipulation. Mm. Number five, investments. So you've been with somebody, you're married to them, or even in a boyfriend girlfriend relationship, you have kids. Or you have property, cars, and things of that nature. You feel like, and and sometimes time. I put all this time in that I just need to stay here and stick it out. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to jeopardize what we built, which is other than kids is much much of nothing. (laughs) So, and then six, the all favorite love, love. We care too much, even though we need to leave the situation. You know, and and it's fine that you could. Because you're always going to care about somebody, especially if you've been with them 
after a couple of months, you know, like you fall in love or you in love. Hey, but you know, we're gonna you gotta have a certain level of care for somebody. So those are my six. All right, gentlemen. <laughs> Just give you some time to up. Yeah, to marinate. So, so Pastor B, I'm let you go next because that's so deep. My brain's still frying and trying to get it. So go 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 ahead. Well, I, listen, I first and foremost Life is, is, and thank you everybody for joining us. Appreciate you all spending time with us this morning. Absolutely. Uh, but life is already filled with so much emotional pain, right? We, we, there's enough that we go through already um, in life. And, and to think that people will add, uh, add pressure or add weight to their life unnecessarily by living in a space that essentially you're not qualified to operate in, mm. right? Uh, in intentional hurt, but we're not qualified for. Uh, and that's just the truth. We, we subject ourselves to it all the time, but I call it intentional hurt, staying in a space that you have the power to relieve yourself of. It's, it's a strange thing, and, and to, to the earlier point, we find all the excuses in the world. We work for excuses to, to remain there instead of the one excuse or justification to leave. And that is to get better. Uh, and, and so psych psychologically, the question remains, why do we subject ourselves to intentional hurt? Because when you live in a space and you know that it's not conducive to your growth, when you live in a space and you know that it's not edifying, the Bible says that. Uh, all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. It's it's lawful for me to, to be in a relationship, but it is not expedient for me to be in a relationship that is slowly destroying me. Right. Right. Uh, and, and so those are the things that you have to consider. You know, what am I getting out of this? What am I contributing to it? And, and most of all, what am I getting out of it? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us always ask the question, you know, what have you done for me lately? Well, the truth is, what have you done for yourself? Mm. Right. Uh, you, I think a lot of this deals with, you know, a, a self-examination. Right. Uh, and that's what we have to really consider. You know, what are my thoughts about self? If I've got issues with self, no one is going to give you more value than you give to yourself. And that's the thing that people have to recognize. And once you learn to value self, you'll have a better perspective about how you come and go and interact with other people. I'm going to stop right there. Pause right there just to give some room for some people to uh to respond. Yeah. Uh, great day, great uh, grand rising. Morning, morning. Patricia Gale. Oh, D Rochelle, good to see you all. So I'll pause, hey. guys. Hey Wendy, what's going on? Good morning. God bless you. Thank you guys for coming through. So if you are on, on my Facebook page, if you're on Periscope, make sure that you are tapping your screen and make sure that you're commenting. This is an interactive show. We yes, love indeed. to talk, us three. We could talk for hours, us three. But sometimes <laughs> we want to go back and listen to read comments and ask questions and everything. Right. So as to AD's point, I mean, I, I should have known not to let Pastor Brian go. <laughs> I should have just waited. Waited. <laughs> now, my point for this is mute is all get out. But it was, <laughs> I'm telling you, the running joke is around here that I'm Otis, right? So that's, nobody pays to see you, Otis. But uh, <laughs> all right, so I've, I've been that guy. You know, I've been all those six that you mentioned. You know, uh, I stayed because uh, I, I got time invested. I stayed because I thought I loved. I stayed because, um, oh, Lordy. All right, my Facebook feed just dropped, I think. Stream on my nerves. <laughs> it's all good. Let's yeah, keep it rolling. Great. Let's keep it rolling. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Go ahead, man. You stayed because. Yeah, I stayed because, you know, it was I, I, I thought I loved. I stayed because, you know, I got to, I don't want to, you know, you know how that, that old mentality is. I don't want to play, you know, how you go to the casino and you play the, 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 uh, the, what do you call them? The, uh, the slots. I mean, uh, the, the, slots. the one arm banded. Yeah. The plane. Yeah. No, the slots. And okay. then you that, I'm not going to sit here and play the slots all day and get, and get it hot for somebody else for me to leave. And then somebody <laughs> else come in and get, that was the right. mentality that you, right. and so I stayed in there. I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to play the slot all day. Right, and then get it all warm, and somebody, then some other dude coming in, <laughs> and right. benefits of my hard work. No, and so I endured about nine, ten years of nonsense because that that was my fear. 
Right. right. But I got to the, I got to a place to where after the after the fear settled, I went through my thing. I went through my I went to my gray area. I went right. through that. I, I went through that. Uh, this after this period, I went through that. Mm. Uh, I love that, by the way. I, I feel <laughs> perfect that sermon every chance I get. I, lo- I love it. Um, but that's where I was. And, and but we have to we have to get out of that place right. uh, because the hurt. I mean, the hurt is still hurt. The hurt is still pain. Right. I mean, so why are we? Why are we? Uh, you see the pain. You wake up every morning with it. At some point, you got to say, "I don't want to do this." Right. I'm done. Yeah. Right. So, AD, yes. until you get to that place that Terry is talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, everybody can can fill in the blank. I stayed because. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. I stayed because fill in the blank. Right. And I, I, I've done the same thing. Uh, I stayed because I had the power. Right. You know, you, you know, some people live with some people have this possessive mindset and someone allows you to possess them. Right. 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 So you stay because you got the power right. and you can't handle a relationship where you're standing on on equal ground. So you stay right. in a right. place where you can overpower somebody, possess somebody, control somebody, you right. know. And, and, that, and so the question to the to the victim in that relationship is, why did you stay? I stayed because I needed somebody to guide my life. I needed somebody to take care of me. You know, right. a lot of people will feel that a lot of times it's, you know, it's, it's female to male. Yeah. Where a woman stays with a aggressive mindset of, you right. know, this, this, this uh, overbearing man because right. she feels that's her protector. Yes. Yes. Or he's really yes. the violator. Right. You know, uh, right. and because you have these insecurities, you stay in that relationship because you don't feel like you can do any better. better. Right. That's I, a big I've one. been in a relationship where I felt like I wasn't adequate enough to go and, and find somebody on my level. So I, I'm sorry, I, I stayed in a relationship where I felt like somebody was above my level, but for whatever reason, they was crazy enough to be interested in me. Right. 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 And, and, I, and I did. I wasn't really the attraction wasn't really there. Right. But the resource was. Right. 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 Woo. Right. Right. <laughs> right? I, I, you know, I wasn't really drawn to that person. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I got everything I needed. Right. In that relationship. And so I, I dealt with her because and, and it was enough to tolerate her because I was able to do what I needed to do and handle my thing. Yeah. And that. That's just foul, right? <laughs> Very right. foul. Yeah. Right. But again, I mean, right. you know, again, why did I stay? Yeah. Right? Fill in the blank. What I stayed because, you know. So we, I think, yeah. a lot of us find ourselves in a situation like that. Did D. Rochelle able to get back on? Uh, I'm not sure. She's on. She's okay. on Periscope. Yeah, she said she was having. She said Periscope one would be great, but it looks like it's flowing. So praise the Lord. Yeah, Periscope, <laughs> Periscope flowing. Uh, Facebook is interrupted. So yeah. It's all- it's all good. Yeah. They just catch the replay. Oh, um, <laughs> so so, so, <laughs> so in staying right. So what? How do you feel? What shifted your? What shifts your mindset? Right. What? What is the point that is there a breaking point? Um, or do you realize? You know, what's that? That saying? I could do bad all by myself. You know, that's, when do you get stupid mentality? But people <laughs> do it. What do you do it? When you get there, you know, like I and and the bad all by myself usually are used in the wrong place, but yeah. in this moment, <laughs> in this moment, you know, yeah. Yeah. when do you when do your mindset shifts? When does it when does it come out? You know, um, how do you begin to change it? You yeah. know, that is is in my opinion is um, totally totally dependent on the individual, right. uh, because you know different points change different people like for me it took uh it took me being homeless for me to have a mind shift a mindset shift um and, and it wasn't because of my mind it was because of my stomach because brother was hungry if all the time so my mind had to say okay this is something else i gotta do i gotta, I gotta do something else here so it, uh, when the mind shift comes it comes in different ways for different people um uh, for me it, it took me i went I hit all the way to the bottom and then I dug six feet and went mm-hmm. down six. You know what I'm saying? So right. it depends before I, before I finally realized and said, 
I have to do something because I, I came to the realization that I was the common denominator in every problem that I've ever had in my life. I was the common denominator and I had to either uh, carry the one, fix my mindset or, you know, stay the uneven fraction. I mean, it was just kind of the. It's got a chip. Uh, the pastor Brian, he liked that thing. I like, <laughs> like that. <one. laughs> well, uh, I, you know, I agree with you, man. I think everybody has a bottom. Right. 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 And and right. so the question is, what is your bottom? You know, somebody right. hits rock bottom when they bump their head. Somebody hits rock bottom when they scrape their knee. Right. Somebody hits rock bottom when they break their arms. Somebody right. hits rock, rock bottom when they break their back. I mean, what is your you know, bottom right and, and sometimes you know one person's surface is another person's bottom and you look right. at other people but i don't know how you could have stayed so long oh, no. i right. left the first time that blank blank did this right 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 or i have left the first right. time i felt that right. you, you right. know the people always so say everybody right. has a bottom right. point right. Theory, i think right. if you hit your when you hit your bottom it's time to go right what's up Dwayne? The real what up Dwayne? <laughs> what's up boy how them how them baby girls doing? <laughs> we, we miss, yeah, we miss man, you on, we miss you. We miss you on this side, bro. I'm yes, telling you. Indeed. Oh, but yeah. What is? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. You know, what is your bottom? But see, you know what gets on my nerves? People always got an opinion, just like Pastor Brian said. Right. You know, uh, why did you stay so long? And all that. Let me tell you something. I need for people to, if you have not ex- ever experienced that place, shut up. Uh, and right. that is being real about it. Don't open your mouth. Don't make any comments about it because you don't understand. Right. They could be right. running with two left shoes, but if you ain't never experienced it yourself, there's nothing you can say. How are you gonna have how are you gonna have an opinion about something you've never experienced? I've I've right. you know it's just like somebody who is single trying to give a married person advice. Right, right. Uh, what on, on what planet does that work? I just don't. I don't see that happening. Hey, unique and authentic me. How are you? Good morning. Go ahead. See, see what she did. She came in. She came right in and say, "Hey, to Dwayne." <laughs> oh, good though. We love you. We love you. We love you though. We the oldest. I'm telling you, Dwayne. I see you know that. We we miss you over here, bro. Yes, and so, indeed. And so do the people. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Oh right. yeah. Stay on the ground for a business. If you ain't, if you ain't ever been. So, okay, so we hit rock bottom, right? We decide we're gonna change something. We decide we're gonna do something different. Um, so what's the first thing you do when you decide to change your situation? What's That's the me. first thing you do? Try to avoid catching a case. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Hey, man, sometimes right. when that right. When right. reality hits you, man, you know, when you, you, what they say, things hit different when revelation strikes, boy. I tell you, right. you know, you start looking at that person and you start remembering all the things that you went through and you begin to blame that person instead of holding yourself accountable. Right. And, and a lot of people lash out at the opposition. They lash out at that person because they consider that person the problem. But the reality is you need to self-reflect and recognize, man, nobody made me stay here. Now, there are cases when you are forced into a into a corner. But for men, we you know, we have fewer excuses than women have, Facts. you know. And, and, and so I believe that half of the cases of domestic violence uh, in the breakup of a relationship come from the revelation of I've been living with what? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's deep. So I say the first thing is try not to catch a case. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, um, I'm recognize that you were in there yourself. You stayed too long. You need to hold yourself accountable. Don't blame that other person because of who they are. Blame yourself for not recognizing it and doing something better, making a better decision for your life. Right. And I, and I completely concur with the good pastor <laughs> because that you know you, you don't want to catch that you don't want to catch a case man and, right. and part, because when you get to that when you finally get to that breaking point and you have that aha moment in the mirror right. right uh it's 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 different and you have to you know come to grips and come to a realization that i was a dirty dog and when you get to that place let me tell you something and men, especially, it's harder for men because we live, we we walk in the level of pride. 
Right. So when we get to that place of that, that aha moment, it's like, <gasps> for real? Right. We pull in the Steve Urkel. We talked about it yesterday. Right. You Did I saying? do that? Did I do that? <laughs> yeah. So when you get to that place, right? It's, it's a it's it's hard, right. but yeah, I concur with Pastor Brian. The first step, the first thing that you want to do, is to make sure you don't catch no case. Make sure that you are in a padded room and a locked door, because right. it will hit you like a ton of bricks. It did for me. I only can right. speak for Terry, but for right. me, um, it was rough. It was it was hard, man. That was that first step, though. Yeah, right. Pride, ego will keep you from getting better and moving forward. True. Sure will. True. Sure will. True. So I guess it's it's for me, it's just, I guess, accepting the reality and the truth of your situation, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I think that's the toughest part, accepting the reality and the truth. Like, this is where I'm at. This was going on. It's not going to get any better. <laughs> like, yeah. I got to make a move. I got to do something. So I think the, the you know, one of the main things is, is just doing something and you know even if you've never done or had a conversation just do something because you want your life to move forward right. nothing worse than being stuck in a situation over a decade because it happens yeah. because yeah. you know you're going to work you're coming home you're going to work coming home Woo. you know you're just going through the motions of things in life and you know right. and what's they'll saying you don't want to upset the apple cart so you're just going through the motions but you're not happy you're not experiencing anything you're not growing you're not developing you're not seeing what's out there as far as like opportunities. And I'm not talking about like relational opportunities, just life in general. <laughs> you know, like yeah. you'll hear about stuff because yeah. you're here like, hey, did you see such and such happen in 2006? How did I, miss, I missed that because I was too busy with my head down, going to work, coming home and dealing with nothing that I've missed life. You know, you'll miss out on so much mm-hmm. when you're not, you know, when you're not enjoying life. So doing something is key. Doing something is key. Doing something is key. Here's the thing, and and, and I'm going to repeat this because I said it yesterday in the podcast. Um, but and this is probably a bad analogy, so Pastor, you might want to cover your ears when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I want everyone to con- to think, consider your life, and your you know, like a car, your car. When it is time for an oil change, what do you do? You go down to Jiffy Lube and you get your oil change. If your cams are messed up, you need to get your trainers gone. You go down to the auto mechanic and get it fixed. Right. right. What we have to do is we have to take our life and go to someone who can fix it, a life coach, a pastor, whatever, that can help us fix the issue. Because until you fix the issue, guess what? You can't put your car in drive. And right. go anywhere. You right. feel what I'm saying? So we have to uh, get over the pride of having to go and get help. See, men, and I and I speak mainly for me, but 80% of the men that's walking the planet, we, we don't want to go to anybody else because we feel like we got it. We feel like we got it all taken. We got it all under control. Can't nobody tell me nothing that I ain't never I ain't never been through. Da, 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 da. That whole nonsense that we go through with men. Right. 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 But the whole time your car sputtering. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop it off right there. I'm close to the <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't go to the mechanic. Well, look, look, I was trying to, yeah, and even larger black men is what right. um was saying. You're absolutely right, man. We we're we're the worst at it. Well, I maybe we're not the worst at it. But because it hits so close to home for us, we feel like we're the worst at it, you know, uh, right. and, and that's just the truth. But but again, I, you know, we're, we're at a place, space and time where we can't have excuses. Right. There, there's too much information available. Right. Right. I, I, right. One right. thing that I've learned. Right. It, that there's too much information available for us. D- did you all ever notice in in the scripture you go from Genesis to Revelation? Uh, where does the scripture, the Bible, talk about uh, bad relationship between a husband and a wife? Mm. Yeah, makes you ponder. <laughs> where does the, where does the scripture get into? Where does the scripture get into a a, a, a bad husband or, or a bad wife? You you have to you have to look deep into the scripture to understand 
relationship because it gives you all the tools about right. what you should do right or what you shouldn't do but nobody knows how Moses treated his wife right you never hear that right. Yeah. Right. That's true. Right. You, you don't get you don't delve into that. You've got to go do a much deeper study in the relationship uh, of people, of husbands and wives in Scripture uh, to understand. Right? right. There's so much information in in how Adam got caught short with Eve. Right. You know, how did the enemy deceive Eve right. if Adam was on the job? Right. 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 What, what made Abram or Abraham lie about his wife Sarah. Mm. Right? Why, right. What what was it about him fearing that somebody was going to take his wife because she was so pretty? Right. You know. Right. Uh, you see a few examples. Abraham, Hagar. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hagar was was a great. That you know you know you had some drama with Hagar and but but what I'm saying, uh, Goodson, is it doesn't speak to. You know, it doesn't go into detail about uh, Abram calling out Sarah and letting her know, look, you the one brought her to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 True. Because Sarah said, here, take Hagar and let's have a baby this way, trying to go around God. And for those of you who don't know the story, you know, God promised Abraham a son, mm -hmm. promised Sarah, his wife, a son. And they were waiting on God. They were old in age and they decided to take the shortcut and, and get the maid servant from from uh, Sarah and Abraham went and slept with with the the maid servant Hagar and had a son Ishmael and then everything blew up hey, because of man. Indian strife. But it doesn't delve into the details about that. It just tells you that there was strife between Hagar and Sarah. There was strife between Ishmael and when Isaac came along, the actual son, the not actual, but the, the the natural son of Abraham and Sarah, and how Ishmael and Isaac had issues. It says this, but you don't go into the detail. We have to understand based on the information and how we lived that that was drama, right? Right. That was to that was back then today's version of reality TV because right. you know they were counting in that house for Hagar and Ishmael to get put out. Mm -hmm. Right. And so so what I'm saying is we don't go into those level of detail. So how do we learn? Mm. How mm -hmm. do we learn? This time, this kind coming forth, but by fasting and prayer, that's yeah, why you yeah. have to have. Yeah, a yeah, yeah, that's why you <laughs> right. got to know who Jesus is, yes. because you'll never get this understanding. The Bible says study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. If you don't have God in the center of your relationship. Listen, you're not in your Bible, you're not in your scripture, you're not praying and all this stuff is happening and you're just reacting to stuff that's going on and you wonder why you end up in a prison of your own emotions. Mm. And, and the point that I'm trying to make is you don't go into those level of detail, but the only way to understand those details is to study the scripture, have a prayer life and, see, and the Bible begins to open up. It begins to reveal itself to you. And you start to identify yourself. The greatest thing that ever happened to me is when I found myself in the scripture. Mm. Oh, Lord, help me. Yes. I'm about to go down the path, y'all. Yes. I mean, it was it was the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me. When I started right. reading the scripture, the scripture started coming alive to me. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. I do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Me. And, and the greatest part about it is now you can find your so you can find your issues in scripture, but you yes. can also find your solutions in there. Right. Right. That's the, only thing they, that's the only thing they gave me. I mean, I'm with Pastor Brian on this. I mean, I mean, you know, even though his, his the ring he has on is so fly this morning, and also that dress <laughs> he's rocking so fly this morning, like Sam <laughs> yes, said, he yes, did indeed. get fly today. Uh, Ad, we are severely, sir, underdressed. Yes, we, we're gonna time. work on this. We're gonna work on it. <laughs> <laughs> but that Friday, Friday, man, Friday. I was I was in a place uh, where. Uh, that was the only thing that saved me. And your salvation. Go ahead, Goodson. Sorry, man. Right, right. I'm with you, uh, Chris. Just <laughs> uh, now get the offer yeah. in. Praise the, the Lord. Lord. It goes to the church and now I'm over. Right. <laughs> yes, indeed. So that was my only sauce, was, was the word. Because when I was losing my mind right. and not knowing what I was going to do, God, you're going to have to, because, you know, we all get to that place to where, uh, we have no other options. Right. Ty Tribbett has a great song about it on, on one of his albums. It said, no other choice. Right. When you get to that place where you have no, no other, other choice. choice. Right. 
uh, and I've, I've been there more than a few times. But right. <laughs> <laughs> but to depart what Pastor was saying, just finding yourself in the scripture, finding yeah. yourself in the scriptures, you know, yeah. after you find yourself in the scriptures. So that's that right there. That that's a mouthful right there. And, and, and take that to heart. And for myself as well, like finding yourself, you know, in God is, yeah. is one of the keys to to getting that freedom, because a lot of times, you know, like you're saying, you're so stuck and so constantly looking at the situation or the problems and what's going on and just putting your head down, just going through the motions right. and not getting the revelation from God as to what to do, you know, and how should I proceed? How should I change my situation? Because the thing is, it's about the change. We want right. change. Like, right. I can't keep living like this. I want change. Right. So who do you, you should seek the change agent, the one that can change everything around you. So right. that is that is like, wow. So don't 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 sit, don't wallow, don't sit in your mess, don't sit yeah. and just just survive life, survive yeah. in relationships. Like that's yeah. that's crazy. God has given you life, you know, life more abundantly, and yeah. you should be living that abundant life. You know, a lot of times they it's always equating to money. But that is, that's not the truth, that, that prosperity in your spirit and your soul and, and your life, period, is what God wants for you here, here, yeah. you know. And, and so you can encourage others to, to press it forward. I, I tell you what, you guys are dropping that beautiful <laughs> beam footage this morning. That's what's up. I'm not mad at y'all. But I'm going to go back to my car analogy because y'all, even though y'all look over there and bypass it. <laughs> Let's <laughs> get back to that because I mean, Look, I'm still trying to find out what a cam is. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, but what did he look at that? <laughs> but you know, it's just like AD said. You know, don't stay in your don't stay in your mess. Don't stay in that muck in that dirty place. It's just like I'm going back to my car analogy. If you get into your car and you right. hear your car knocking, right, and you know it needs a tune up or you know it needs to be joints like that. What are you going to do? Hey, Cheryl, good morning. God bless you. Um, what are you going to do? You have to change it in order for it to not knock, right? You got to right. change it in order for you to not hear that clicking sound, right? right? Right. We need to go and fix our life. You know, we have to, we have to kind of get a, you know, I made a, I did a quote, and this is probably going to sound ridiculous to some people. <laughs> but I'm going to say it anyway. I did a quote some years ago, back in 2016, and I said, you know, we take uh, our lives. We check our credit score all the time. When we go to the, when we go to a bank, or when we go to to get a car, and we get denied, and we get uh, that rejection letter in the mail, mm-hmm. and we say, "Man, I gotta fix this." Right. Sometimes we need to we, we need to fix our life score. You know, let's let's change some stuff. Let's look in the mirror. Let's say, "Okay, I was this way and that way. Now I gotta fix the squeaky wheel." Right. Because the squeaky wheel had on fell off. You know how we say Jesus take the wheel? <laughs> Jesus took my whole right axle. <laughs> and because I was not in the place. So we, we have to we have to fix it. We have to right. fix it. Right. Right. You, gotta fix you, it. you said a mouthful, man, that the reality is <clears throat> you notice it's broken and then you have to fix it. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? When you get new information, mm-hmm. you do something different. When we know better. We do better. And the problem that we have is given new information, we keep our habits the same or we operate against or contradictory to the new information. Mm -hmm. That's cognitive dissonance, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Having having an understanding of one thing. What'd you say, bro? That was who? Cognitive what? Cognitive cognitive dissonance is (laughs) big word. Happy long. (laughs) <laughs> understanding, having a position, right? Right. Gotcha. right. Cognitive dissonance is having a position, a belief, an understanding, and then operating against it. Right. Right. One of the challenges that you have in in bad relationships is, you know, what it, what it, uh, the old adage when people show you who they are, believe them. Right. 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 All the time. And what happens is somebody can show you who they are. Right. And you still act like that's not who they are when you've got the evidence. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. You're under one belief that this person is good for me. And, and then you find out that they're not. But mm-hmm. you stay in the relationship justifying the fact that you stay. That's cognitive dissonance. That's believing something that's contradictory to the new information that you have been given. 
Right. I just learned something. <laughs> right. Right. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Terry is writing it down. Terry is writing it down. Think I'm not? Watch, watch this. <laughs> Man, but how many people are guilty of that, bro? Yeah, right. You know, that's right. why people go to prison when you can't take it anymore instead right. of just getting up and leaving. When that reality hits you that you've been lying to yourself. Yes. You know, uh, Terry, you said when you, you go, you take your car to the to the auto repair shop. Yes. Because something it's there's a rattle in your motor. It's a rattle. And yeah. so you take it in and they say, oh, well, this is the problem. Mm -hmm. OK, are you going to have them fix it? Or are you going to say, oh, thank you for telling me and drive that rattling motor back home? Because it's what we used to. What, you know, once you get the new information, are you going to keep rattling or are you going to get it repaired? Are you going to do something different about it? And the problem that we have, what gets us into that sunken place, what gets us into that place where we're ready to catch a case or we've got to go lay on somebody's couch or we have to take medication or we get strung out of whatever the case might be. Right. Because you get the new information and you stay where you are. Mm -hmm. trying to justify right yourself yep right Amen. and and that's the problem that we have and and i'm guilty of it We've, uh, i don't know very many people that have not had to learn from that experience mm -hmm. rare is the case where somebody just listen i'm uh, uh nope that ain't good for me i'm out right that's a great behavior i miss that class right <laughs> but i'm better now <laughs> right 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 uh, do I ain't say we're not hopping on 75, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85. <laughs> You better get it fixed. Right. You better get it fixed. We're gonna right. be looking crazy around here. And and right. and and people struggle in that arena. Right. I mean, it's just like Pastor Pastor Brian is saying about you know getting that new information that can uh could uh, possibly change your life. Here this this is what this is what Terry did. Terry took new information and killed it. Right. I took I got new information. People say, this is what you can do. I've been given information on a silver platter and said, I don't want it. <laughs> right. right. Because right. I'm I'm used yeah. to being I'm used to being hurt. I'm used to being here. Ooh. I'm used to right. hearing my car knock. I'm used to hearing my 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 oil pan click because I don't want to go fit to get it fixed. Why? Because it takes money right. to, to get those things fixed. Meaning right. this is how we, we we have to expend common sense. Right. If we're depleted in the common sense area, it's hard to pay for something you ain't got. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's listen, that is accountability is a critical thing. That, well, you, listen, I, I I've learned this. Most people struggle because they don't have mirrors in their life. Right. You you get up in the morning, you go into your bathroom, and well, after you handle your business, you look in the mirror. Right. And in the mirror, you see the things that you have to fix before you go present yourself to the world. That's right, Chris. Relationships, community uh -huh. is essentially mirrors. Right. Family are mirrors. Yeah. The right. people that will tell you that you got something on your face. Mm. And what happens is when you isolate yourself in a bad relationship, in a lot of cases, you get away from all your mirrors. Yeah. You get away from the people who will tell you you in a bad relationship. Right. Yep. You in a situation that's not healthy for you. Right. And the greatest advantage that a person can have in your life is when they break all the mirrors in your life. Mm. Right. Mm. Completely shocked. Exactly. And then they become your only method for seeing yourself, yourself is through somebody that's abusing you. Mm. So don't let relationships break the mirrors in your anybody that's coming into your life that isolates you from the people that love you, that isolates you from the people who mean you well is a danger. If you start seeing people avoid you and don't want to come by your house anymore because of the mate that you have. Now, please understand this. I have people. Well, look, I, I married him. This is my. Yeah, I got all of that. But I, I'm. it's a danger zone. Yes. Yes. And people want to avoid you who were always around you because of the person that you have in your life. Mm. You better check because right. they're it. One of the efforts is to break the mirrors in your life so nobody tells you that you got a booger in your nose. Is that Sam clapping in the background? But while, while, while I'm thinking about that, I, I could have I could have heard I heard clapping in the background. That's that that, no, that was me. That was me. Oh, that was you. Oh, okay. Slow clap. <laughs> like, dramatic. I'm telling you, listen. 
the nuggets are being the nugget the chicken nuggets are being dropped. <laughs> today. I'm just letting you guys know. Um, oh, it, man. It's, it's amazing. You, you know, that's the first sign of abuse, right? When you have yes. people that, that, that kill you away from other people, because yes. if uh, the people that you normally have with you, like you said, they tell you you got a bug in your nose, and then the person come into your life and they'll know they take you out. They're not the ones. Do they say a pretty piece with a biscuit, brother? Don't forget that. Oh, what happened? Okay, did I take him out? Okay, I don't know what happened. Yeah. No, I had I had a had a, someone trying to get in my live. I just had. Oh, to, uh... hey, daddy, come on, you can get on. All right. So... <laughs> But yo, like for real, like don't just stand there in your life. Right. Do something. If you have people that are negative, get them out. If you have people, if you if you feel a certain way about certain things, right. Fix it. Take your car to the mechanic, like you right. said, like Dwayne said earlier. We can't get on eighty five doing forty. Right. 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 I'm just saying. I mean, it's not here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah, but do, um, hand do something. Do something. What, what what do they say in church? Um, if I can't say nothing, I just wave my hand. Yeah. Hey. 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 I feel that deep down in my shine. Nah, nah, nah. Because now that you can't touch your neighbor, right? <laughs> See, touching your neighbor is how we got here. See, go. Point to your neighbor and tell him. Give him a virtual high five. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right we had our 45 uh, mark we want to hold you guys long yeah. um if you guys have any questions oh, drop them right. about what's up oh, i like round tables this is fun right. yes i would like to do this like every day but you know life nah. and scheduling you're right <laughs> so <laughs> have social distance hey, hey oh Dwayne, from, from idaho to georgia there you go <laughs> <laughs> so we appreciate you guys rocking with us. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We thank you guys for, for rocking with us every day. We're here Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Uh, we do generally do like separate uh, periscopes and pass the cast or whatever. But today we're doing a round table. We try to do this at least once a week. So definitely support and come through. It encourages us the more. And if you're on Periscope, make sure you're sharing and you're watching the replay. If you're on Facebook, make sure you tag somebody that may need this and tag somebody that might get mad that they get mad that why'd you tag me in this? <laughs> Just tag them. Just yep, tag yeah. them. And share yep, on yep. your page as well. Share on your page as well. All right. So we're going to get out of here. Any closing remarks? Uh, if you know, a, a shameless plug to Thomas Temple in the green screen behind Pastor yes. Brian there. If yes. you guys are anywhere near Georgia, anywhere near Georgia, if you're in Alabama, South Carolina, wherever. If you're anywhere near Georgia, head on down to Joesboro. Yes. Check out Thomas Temple. You get, yes. to hear that, you get to hear that man, the bald one right there in the black. Uh, you get to hear him. Like, well, when once this lifts, uh, you'll be able to go, <laughs> right. and hear we'll go live. Listen, go to Solomon's Temple's page. On Facebook, Facebook page. Yeah, you can go get, live. Yeah, get to from see, the, see the service. I'll say this before we go. Um, since you two have been in my life over the last year and some change, my life has changed dramatically. So if I've if you've, if I've never told either one of you that, I I can tell you that right here live on this on this on this uh, scope, that you guys have truly changed my life, and I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Like, is he is he being sarcastic over anything? He may be. Oh, he'll cry. He'll cry. He might be. He might be. I'm just letting y'all know, man. I'm just I'm just letting y'all. Let me put my business in the street. <laughs> oh no, let's go no. <laughs> you can see Sam put it out there too. Look at that. Iron, brother. Iron sharpens iron. Yes. Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys as well. Because it's it's been a blessing in this year. We yeah, have an anniversary coming anniversary. up. <laughs> anniversary special coming up. We're gonna yeah. proclaim our anniversary. We might have passed it. Or oh, it's around this time. We just gonna make it up and that's gonna be the date. <laughs> yeah, gonna yeah. Be, we're gonna make it up. The, the yeah. you. <laughs> we missed but, the Wayne. Just yes, yes. Yes. Good See, we got a spot. One more spot. Four. Four yeah. completes. It balances the, the screen. Come on, man. <laughs> we need, need to be on this side or the other side. One of them sides of mine. <laughs> I'll tell you what. All right. All right, brother. So we're getting out of here. So we appreciate you guys. So we see you guys next week, Monday, 9 a.m. in this same spot. Kind of. <laughs> Just follow the hashtag, follow the Brothers of Legacy. Just follow the Brothers of Legacy on Periscope and on Facebook. 
All right, guys. Peace All out. Right. Peace out.